Hello, this is the second video of probably three, maybe four videos about the air and cupboard installation assessment that we're going to do in college. So this is a training video just to give you a little bit of a head start. Obviously, if you're not one of my students at college, this may be of some use to you. Uh, if not, just look away. If you like it, then hit the like button at the bottom and that will help us all. So the cold feed to the cylinder. We've already installed the cold water storage system above. That was on the previous video. Now we've got to concentrate on getting a pipe out using a series or a combination of bends into a low pressure gate valve then continue down lower to the cylinder below. So this is a, a few slides I've put together just to give you a little bit of a chance. So as I've just said, you're now going to um, completely do the next bit to the tank. That doesn't sound very good. What I'm going to try and do is a combination of bends. So you could put an elbow here. You could put another elbow here and another elbow there. So three fit-ins. That's six potential solder points, six potential leaks. Obviously, resistance to the flow, it's under it's under gravity now. So what we've done is put nice bends in there so we don't have any resistance in the flow of water. So how do we do this? First things first, we've got to make sure we're on the correct pipe. Now I'm not going to go into that now. I'm going to do I'm going to ask you a series of questions at assessment, but I've ticked the right one. That will give you a bit of a clue. Um, but what we've got to do is pull a bend that's going to come out of this tank and go through this gap so we can connect and pull that offset onto the low pressure gate valve. So there's a couple of ways you could do this. Let's look at the next slide. Um, the simplest way I found is just like we did with the tank above, is to place a piece of scrap 22 mil copper that's going to extend further than the gap. And then by holding a piece of scrap copper about 500 mil long below, I've now marked, pushed it up high to this piece of pipe, found the center, as you can see, it's equal distance through the middle, placed a little mark, and this mark will then be our center line when we've come to use the benders. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to pull a 90 degree bend into an offset this is this yellow line represents the wall and then we're going to clip it either side with a gate valve and i'll show you in the next few slides so as i say the piece of pipe you're going to need is about 500 mil long to do this piece so a bit of scrap would just be ideal once i pulled the bend obviously it was over length so you need to trim this pipe so that it fits well let's just go back a slide i've already got that gauge there so keeping this piece of pipe I've now laid it over my bend and marked the ends and trimmed them so I knew it would fit completely in the gut into the tank. It's really important that we don't go beyond where we've bent it because the throat here is a smaller diameter and it will leak from below. So it's majorly important that this is fit with enough gap about 20 or 30 mil prior to it going into the tank connector. Okay, so moving to the next slide. Before we do the offset, we've got to mark a line down the wall. It's very important to, look, to draw our lines so we can clip our lines to place the pipe in the clip. So the easiest way to do that is I, I've now pushed this piece through and I'm going to push it back to the wall below. Oh, too many slides backwards, sorry about that. It was all over the place. And as you can see now, I've marked against the wall a line when I've got the spirit level in the correct, correct position with the bubble. And I've marked a little pencil line. I've just drawn this a bit deeper so you can see it. And then once I'm happy, I've taken the pipe out of the way. I've moved the spirit level over to that line and drawn a vertical line from the top of the cupboard to the floor so we can get ready to pipe clip for the feed to the cylinder and to hold and support the gate valve. So let's look at now once the offset's been done. But how do we get that offset measurement? Well, again, a simple way to do this is to hold a tape measure to the wall right here to the back of the pipe, not the center, as you're gonna see, to the back of the pipe, back of the wall, to the back of the pipe, because the pipe clip, this is the back of the wall, has a gap of around 15 millimeters, and that would need to be deducted from this measurement. So 80 minus 15 would give me an offset of 65 mil. Obviously, if the gaps, if the pipe's coming through further, you just measure that gap and you'd still reduce it by 15 mil. So a very important part to remember that it's around 15 mil from the base of the clip, to, sorry, from the wall to where the base of the pipe would sit in. So this is the back of the pipe. And as you can see, if I measure to the center, I would have to add on the radius and that becomes too much to remember. So it's easy to go either back to back, center to center or front to front, okay. So now we've placed the offset into position. Uh, we know where we've drawn our line because we've got that vertical line from the previous slide. And as you can see, there is my line going up there. And now we can work out or ascertain where we're going to put the clips. 
The clips should be equal distant, so equal either side, and this will allow for maintenance, but obviously to support the valve on the wall. You know, airing cupboards are situations where people will dry their clothes, and if there's a place where someone can put a hanger with a wet jumper on, this pipe, this valve would need to be really supported in there nicely so it wouldn't pull off the wall and weaken the olives in here. And remember, there could be 250 litres of water above, and that's going to come out of those valves if you're, if you're not known about it, and continue to come out until you turn it off. So we've now got the valve positioned correctly. The next thing is now is to concentrate on how we get the actual feed from below the gate valve into the cylinder itself. And there's a bit of a clue here. As you can see, I've got a piece of pipe already stuck in the cylinder against the wall. So let's look what I've done. So there's a scrap piece of copper, very similar to what we did on the tank above and the, the offset above. We've placed it actually in the cylinder. I've moved it to the cylinder and then I've put a spirit level on the top and I've um, making sure that the bubble is going to come in the middle. So once I've got it in there happily, I will mark against the wall. Now that's your vertical line that you've already drawn from the gate valve above. And that pencil mark represents where the pipe would be cut for the fitting that's going to go below. And we'll talk about the fitting in a second. And this one then enabled me to put a clip here the same distance as the clip from the gate valve above. All right, so you can see there's a clip already placed there. You could measure that down there and measure up and put a clip just the same. So with the line drawn, we need to now ascertain the length of this pipe. Right, really important point. You must rem now understand how far the pipe is engaged into the fitting. So what I've done is I've placed a scrap piece of copper up until it can't go any further. That's fully engaged. And I've placed a little pencil mark underneath. I've then taken that pipe out and I've put it adjacent to the valve. This is now the top of the pipe, and we can see this is where it was fully engaged, and I've now carried that pencil mark across. There is a little pencil mark that I put there already, just there, just to show you the top of the valve. So moving it across, that's the top of, sorry, top of the pipe. There's the line I marked originally, fully engaged, and now, knowing where it goes as far as it is, I can take a measurement from the top to the bottom of the pipe, and as you can see here, this gives me 1.17 meters, or 1170 millimeters. And now I can cut that piece of pipe and get ready to solder the fitting on the bottom that's gonna enable me to drain the water out of the cylinder for maintenance. So I've cut the piece of pipe. I've got a slight error here. Look at that. That should be a 22-15-22T. And as you can see, that's this one here. A 22-15-22T. End feed fitting solder there. This is your feed coming from the gate valve. This is going into the cylinder, and underneath we've got a drain off valve. This is the 15 millimeter M stroke F, so male, female, male goes into the socket of the fitting, and the drain off valve would fit into the socket of the elbow. Very, very important though, when before we solder this fitting, that we remove the actual valve body because inside there could be one or two O-rings and certainly a rubber washer at the bottom which obviously turns the water off and stops the water egressing from the valve. This just here is an example of how that would be soldered in. In the airing cupboard situation, a wall would come down here. So this is very important that this valve is soldered away from the wall, not pointing upwards so the water can't come out, but pointing slightly away but slightly up so you can connect the hose pipe on but really important that you can solder this out of position. It doesn't have to be in the clips against the wall, making it tough to do. So put solder it outside on a vice or get some bricks, whatever you need to do. But obviously away from the wall is a lot easier for you. So that's the second video of the airing cupboard installation. Hopefully this is gonna be of some help to you. Any questions, just feedback to me. Cheers and good luck.